A2 Economics, Module 3, The Law of Diminishing Marginal Returns. This law states that by adding increasing quantities of a variable factor to a fixed factor input, then the output added by the additional variable factor will ultimately decline. At this point, diminishing marginal returns are said to have set in. I'll illustrate this concept by use of a simple example. Let's consider a factory which has three machines used in the production process. Both the factory and the machinery are examples of capital and are assumed to be fixed factors of production in the short run. They can't be changed easily. For production to take place, labour is needed. Labour is assumed to be a variable factor in the short run as it can be increased more easily, for example through the use of overtime. In this example, we will plot the total output of the firm against the number of workers employed. Let's assume that production requires the use of all three machines. With one worker, total output is three units. and We can show this on our chart. A second worker means that machinery can be used more efficiently, as when the first worker is not using a machine, our second worker can. The addition of the second worker means that total production increases to 10. This means that the marginal worker, the extra worker, increases output of the firm by 7 units. Adding a third worker means that machinery is used even more efficiently. Total output increases to 20, meaning that the marginal worker increases output by 10. The addition of the fourth worker also leads to an increase in output, this time to 28. However, this increase in output is less than that of the third worker, and it's at this point that diminishing marginal returns are said to have set in. The fifth worker adds only two to total output. Perhaps workers are having to wait for machines, a bit of congestion, and generally a little bit of inefficiency entering into the business. The sixth and subsequent workers actually cause total output to fall as the factory becomes overcrowded and less productive. Perhaps a case of too many cooks spoiling the broth. This has some important implications for us in our study of the theory of the firm. What it suggests is that by adding these variable factors to fixed factors, average costs will initially fall, but as these variable factors become less efficient and diminishing returns set in, average costs will in fact start to rise. It explains the short run average cost curve. Final thing, let's not confuse the law of diminishing marginal returns with the concept returns to scale. That's a topic we'll consider separately.